Let's look at how ketogenesis is regulated depending on fuel availability. So when there is enough energy coming from dietary carbohydrates, there is no need for ketogenesis to occur. Under conditions of excess carbohydrate consumption, there is when there is more than enough to satisfy energy needs and more than enough to fill glycogen storage capacity. Some of this glucose is stored or converted for storage into fatty acids. Conversely, when there is not enough carbohydrate for efficient glucose metabolism, such as in conditions of low calorie diets, carbohydrate depleted diets, under conditions of fasting or dietary deprivation or in pathologic conditions like uncontrolled diabetes for example that is type 1 diabetes adipose tissue releases fatty acids and these are broken down into acetyl-CoA some of these acetyl-CoA molecules power up ketogenesis as we've seen in detail in a previous video but there is more to that. In severe energy deprivation or during starvation, gluconeogenesis depletes TCA cycle intermediates, leading to the diversion of acetyl coas into ketogenesis. Now, in type 1 diabetes, in the context of lack of endogenous insulin, glucose cannot be taken up by tissues. Hence, melanyl-CoA levels decrease, and this is used uh, for fatty acid synthesis. And as a result, acyl transferase 1 inhibition is relieved, which allows the entry of fatty acids into the mitochondria, where they will be degraded to acetyl-CoA. And this is important here. Acetyl-CoA may not be able to pass through the citric acid cycle or TCA cycle because TCA cycle intermediates are mostly used for gluconeogenesis. Thus, acetyl-CoA's power up ketogenesis, which in pathologic conditions may lead to acidosis, where circulating acetoacetate and delta beta hydroxybutyrate decrease blood pH. And this is something to be avoided, especially in type 1 diabetes, when endogenous or self-regulation of insulin is not possible. And as I pointed out earlier, in the other situation, when we talk about individuals on restricted carbohydrate diets, those on very low calorie diets, or people engaging in prolonged fasting, they also show higher levels of ketone bodies in circulation that is in their blood and also in their urine which they should monitor to avoid potential acidosis which is not as likely to occur as in situations of type 1 diabetes because self-regulation of insulin is possible here all right that's it for the video. I hope it was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching.